good fish, good fish on the drop. Stay up, stay up. No, don't go down there. One. Yep. Is Hold it on. a fish or the bottom? No. That's a fish. It is a fish. Yep. Nice salmon, pretty well off. Now he's doing a bit of bobbing. Yeah, or near the surface though. G'day guys, Will Kitching here. Welcome back to another video and thank you so much for joining us. Now in this one, we're up on the Sunshine Coast fishing the close-in reefs for a feed of snapper. Now, sorry to spoil it, but we did not land one snapper throughout the session. However, luckily we found a couple of other tasty reefies and hooked onto a cobia towards the end of the day. Now, to make it interesting, that hit a soft plastic on 12 pound line. So we're in for a fight and uh, you definitely want to see it. Now we also talk about the eating quality of cobia and give you our personal opinion. And we also have a question for you about that at the end that you can leave a comment on. Without further ado though, let's get straight into the video. Stay tuned for a few tips and plenty of action. We started the morning off heading out nice and early before the sun was rising over the horizon to try and chase that early snapper and reefy bite. Now on the way out, we saw some birds and fish busting up so I stopped for a quick cast. It always pays to keep your eye out for this because you never know when there's going to be some big fish in amongst them. But even if you get small mac tuna and bonito, it's great bait for your snapper and reefies. A little bonito or something. Yeah, little bonito, good, good bait. bait. Yeah. After deploying our baits in a soft plastic at a few different spots, we couldn't see much bait or fish on the sounder. All I could manage was this pesky critter. Hooked in the butt. We persisted though and finally found some bait and fish holding on some really rough looking structure on the edge of the reef system that we were on in around 30 or 35 meters of water. All right. You're Good on. fish. Good fish. Grassy probably. Yeah, it looked a bit like it. As soon as it hit the bottom. At least that bite didn't muck around with it. Yeah. Give it up now a bit. Grassy. Yeah. Take that every day yeah. of the week. That was as soon as it hit the bottom on that show there. So. All right, guys. Well. Far out, it's um, 8.40 in the morning at the moment. And that's our first fish of the day. We have barely even had a bite. The conditions have been quite terrible to be honest, and it's been hard to fish. We've got wind against current. They're both really strong. The wind's quite strong and the current's strong going the other way, so it hasn't been easy. There's a bit of swell and mess around as well, but uh, that one, we've just been for a drift. I just put a new bait on and uh, sort of stuffing around a bit, but looked at the sounder and there was a show right on the bottom. So I thought, oh, I dropped right on their head. And as soon as it hit the bottom, he just picked it up. So I must've dropped right on him. But anyway, that's a nice start. Hopefully we get a few more. But anyway, nice tasty one, nice grassy. Now that we'd located some fish, it was time to go back up and have another drift over the area. And it didn't take long for dad to get a hook up. Oh, that's a better fish. Hey, yeah. yeah, that's a good fish. He's gone. Yeah. Yeah. Let me know if you need anything in. Off? Yeah. He's gone. You're kidding me. All morning. That hurts. Hang on, that hurts. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, bit you off. You are nice kidding. Fish. Yeah. Wonder what that was. Got me on the bottom, I'm a bit afraid. Yeah, it did too. Yeah. So frustrating, you wait so long. Funnily enough, that was Dad's first hookup of the day, and it was a good fish too, and it just got him in the reef. So we're fishing some pretty gnarly structure, and uh, yeah, very frustrating. All right, I just thought I'd jump in here really, really quickly to give you a quick tip. 
Now, I've noticed a lot recently that with your reef species like grassy sweet lip, uh, pearl perch, Maori cod, I've been getting a lot of fish right after my sinker bumps into the bottom. So they must see the disturbed sand and hear the noise and come over. I know a lot of spear fishermen scratch the bottom to get fish's attention. So I think that's what it is and it's definitely been happening a lot to me lately. So just something to be aware of. Now, of course, this can be risky because you can get a snag doing this very easily if you're fishing that rough reef. So what I tend to do, I like to wind my sinker up off the bottom a couple of meters. Then if I see a good show on the bottom, I'll drop it down and let it bang into the, into the structure. So yeah, just something to pay attention to. We were coming towards the end of that drift and the fish on the sounder were starting to thin out, but I was still lucky enough to put my bait in front of one. I reckon after this we'll go back up. Put that in the rod hole and move my line, and then one minute we'll go. Yeah. Well, it'll take me a bit because I've got to do a leader and. Good fish, good fish on the drop. Stay up, stay up. No, don't go down there. This is a good fish. Yeah. Good. Oh, he's got me. He's got ya. Just gonna free spool it, guys, and hope he swims out. Oh. It's coming out. Go. It's coming out. No, yeah. No. You dog. Oh my god. I'm got a fish in the bottom. There's whales behind the boat. I'll go back down, see if we can pull him out the other way. Mm. I don't think we'll be able to. He's in. Yeah. I'll take this back up where we started. It was at this stage that I began to wonder whether our 20 pound braid and leader was enough to pull these larger fish away from the structure. In future, when we're fishing our bait so tightly to some rough reef like this, I'll probably consider 30 pound. Yep, still that. Got him. Nine. Yep, good fish again. Drop down. Oh, stay up. There you go. Oh, it's got me again. Are you kidding me? Are you serious? They're good fish too. Yep. Far out. Yeah, you come across them, there's three in this freaking house. Hmm. Fine. Looks alright. Yeah, yeah. Just needs to eat it. Hello. You got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, go. go, go, go. <laughs> All right, you're right, you're right, I think. Half decent? No. What are you going to have here? Yeah, yeah. That's just been getting us. Yeah. I think, I think that's a good one to them. Yeah, because look at the difference between that size yeah. and the ones we were hooking. After Dad bled that grassy and put it in the esky, the bite actually shut down a little bit. So we decided to head out to a little bommie that we have a couple of kilometers further out to check it before we went home. All right, so as you would have seen there, we got onto a little patch of, um, of what we think were grassies. We, we landed a couple and got busted off by three, missed a couple others. So very frustrating when you're having a slow morning. All you want to do is, is um, land a few, you know, every time you hook one and, and lose one, it hurts a lot more. So. Anyway, what we've done, we're, we're going to head home soon, but we just thought we'd come out and give it one last shot. We've got a couple of marks just a few kilometres out, so we thought we'd um, come out here just for a look and pretty much just a bit of a lump with uh, some reef around it and there's been some bait on it, so we're just going to have a drift. We're still dropping our dead bait straight down to the bottom for those grassies and a snapper on the way down or something and we've got the soft plastic in the rod holder, the Z-Man 3-inch minnows in the pink glow. If you've watched my videos before, you'd know that I love that colour for snapper and other reef species. So we got that in the rod holder there, just wafting away. Just free spooling it every now and again, letting it sink down and uh, yeah, fingers crossed something hits it.
one. Yep. Is it a fish or the bottom? No. That's a fish. It is a fish. That's in free spool. Right. Got it. You're kidding me. Are we on? Yep. Just bring that one in. Feels like a snapper. Not a bad fish, whatever it is. Whatever it is. No. There's definitely a bit of weight there. I thought it was heavy shake like a snapper. I don't know what it's gonna be. Got a few head shakes. Fish. Yeah. Huh. Lucky I decided to ch chuck that back out. Near the surface, though. Oh, thought he was off. Wait until I got near the surface to start fighting you. I don't know what it's going to be. I only hope it's a good snapper. Yeah, I hope so. It could be it's fighting weird. Decent fish. Yeah. He's swimming, isn't he? Yeah. It's almost like a cobia. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, that's what it's going like a bit. Very erratic and yeah. some good runs. We've only got this on 12 pound braid, guys. So I'm just going to take it nice and easy. Whatever it is. It's just here. What have we got? <laughs> it's bought. It oh, is a cove. If you want it. Yeah, it's a good size one, I reckon. If you can get it. Come around. Just put that on the other side. I'll just go behind the line. Typical cobia, sees a boat. <laughs> to be honest, this is a good size for the 12 pound. You wouldn't want it to be much bigger. I haven't helped you any, Will. No. There he is. Yeah. Now, if these things go nuts, which doesn't help, doesn't make them easy to net or gaff or anything, so... Do you want to try and net or just gaff? Try the gaff again, just wait, just wait. It's a problem, I haven't had a real good shot at him yet, he's still bloody fine. Oh. 
got him. Nice. Now we'll have a talk to you in a second about these things. Oh, line just broke. Because <laughs> it's only 14 pound litre. So, lucky I went easy on him. We'll give you a look at this guy in a second. Whew, let me catch my breath. It's been a, been a long, hard morning. But anyway, as we say in a lot of our videos, it only takes one or two good fish to turn your day around. So, anyway, we'll hold him up for you. Oh, come here, buddy. Slippery as. There you go, that'll do. As you can see, that little soft plastic in his mouth, three inch Z man. So we say, you know, people use big plastics and yes, they work, but you know, elephants eat peanuts. That little three inch soft plastic in that pink color, the Z man with the TT headlocks jig head. We've caught so many good fish on that over the years. And there's another one. So, you know, he's not a massive cove, but as you might have seen, if you follow my channel for a while, we got a big cobia about a year ago, about 30 kilos, and we gaffed that and ate it. And it was okay, but not, not okay at the same time. It was only just edible. So I think this size will be a lot better eating for, your, for yourself watching if you've ever wondered about, you know, eating sizes and, uh, and cobia and fish like that. I think this will be a much better eating size than those big ones. So we'll test it out. We're gonna bleed him and look after him. Get some nice fillets off him and um, cook him up, so yeah. So just to show you how we're fishing, guys, I know it hasn't been an amazing session, but this is just what we usually do. So we're drifting, we got a bit of breeze pushing us back up this way. Now, that parachute's gonna catch us in a second and it'll swing around here. So we'll drop down with our baits. We've got a little bit heavier sinker on today. We could be using a lighter one with the current conditions, but it was a lot breezier this morning and um, we weren't, we were struggling to get down. So you could be using a lighter sinker and just slowly floating it down, which is what snapper and other reef fish absolutely love. But at the moment, that's what this plastic is doing. So it's gonna be slowly floating down and our baits are gonna be on the bottom, hoping for a grassy sweet lip or something along those lines. So anyway, all we pretty much do, flick this out to the side, you can do a bit longer cast if you want. Just leave it in free spool in the rod holder there. Make sure your drag set right before you do this. And you're just gonna let that waft around. And it'll end up out the back of the boat, but you just leave it in free spool till you think it's down in the zone within 10 meters of the bottom or around there. And uh, then you click that over and let it just dangle around with the swell. So anyway, I'm gonna get my bait down and hopefully we can get another one. That was a fun fight with the cobia. We didn't have any more luck, so it was time to head into the boat ramp and fill out those two nice grassy sweet lip and the cobia. I want you to leave your thought on eating cobia in the comments though. Now the reason I say this guys is because we haven't really been impressed with cobia when we've eaten it. Now a lot of people say that cobia is absolutely delicious, but personally we've eaten three different sizes now. A really big one, a medium one, and that smaller one that you just saw in the video. And all three of them were a little bit average, especially that bigger one, to be honest with you. It was uh, very coarse, um, dry, a little bit flavorless. Uh, the medium one I thought was okay. Dad didn't really like it. When I say okay, it definitely wasn't snapper or pearl perch or mackerel, um, but it was edible. And the smaller one, once again, was quite average. So we tried cooking it beer battered, um, coated in flour with some herbs and spices, just uh, shallow fried. We've tried it uh, in a curry. Uh, we haven't tried it crumbed, but you know, I feel like it would be a similar outcome. So that's why I asked, uh, you know, comment your opinions on eating cobia. Let us know if cooking it a different way um, makes it better because yeah, we have been <laughs> not really been impressed to be honest. The other thing I've noticed, they seem to be a really fatty, oily fish and when you cook them, all of that comes out um, onto the, the hot plate or fry pan or um, onto your plate when you plate it up. So I don't know if grilling it might be a better option. I don't know, but yeah, leave a comment. Let us know your thoughts on eating them and if you have any good recipes or ways to cook them. Of course, if you haven't ever eaten a cobia and you, you want to try it, go for it. I'm not saying not to, you know, a lot of people say they're great and you might absolutely love it. But personally, the three that we've eaten lately um, haven't been great for some reason. So yeah. Let us know your thoughts.
Now that brings us to the end of the video guys. I hope you enjoyed, took something away from it. Um, maybe learn a tip about those uh, grassy sweet lip and um, catching other reef fish. So if you did, make sure you subscribe, leave a like rating. As I said, comment your thoughts on the cobia eating situation and any other questions you may have. And I, I'll get back to every single comment. Uh, until next time, tight lines, happy fishing and stay tuned for plenty more action on the channel. Hope you're all well and thanks for watching this far.